How's it going everybody? This is Double Wide 6 and I'm bringing you a video on how to replace, not actually replace, rebuild the tran axle on an L118 John Deere. This particular tractor uh, might drive about 10 feet and then it stops. So there's something wrong with the hydrostatic transaxle. So I'll be taking a look at it and I have it up on the bench. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my snap ring pliers here and I'm going to remove this fan so I can get at the uh, oil plug. Alright, I was able to get that snap ring off. Now I'm just going to remove the entire fan assembly. We'll start out here I guess with the pulley. You have the pulley then there's like a kind of like a bent washer and then you have your fan and underneath the fan there's another uh, c-clip it's like like a snap ring but it's a c-clip just gonna get all that out of the way and now I'm gonna pull this plug out and this is how I'm gonna drain the oil by removing this plug so with a little bit of prying you can get this oil plug to release and once you get it loosened up it's fairly easy to remove and if we look in here you're gonna see there's a magnet right here and there looks to be a whole lot of particles on there so that is not a good sign but we're gonna drain the oil out of this and then once the oil is drained out we're gonna take it apart and look inside but from what I see it doesn't look too good I guess well, Here's a close look at the magnet and you can see all the metal shavings that are on there. God, I can't think that that would be good, but I don't know if that's normal or not. And there's like a washer down at the bottom. But one thing I do notice is that the oil is filled up about an inch from the top, which is where it's supposed to be. So it wasn't short on oil. And here's just a view of it upside down. This is how I'm draining out the oil. So I'm going to let it drain out. So I've already drained the oil out of this thing and I have it upside down and we're going to pull out all these bolts. These are all 12 millimeter. I'm going to pull them out and we're going to see what's going on with this transmission. And before I start the job, I'm going to let you know that I am not, this is the first transmission I ever tried to rebuild. So we're going to open it up, we're going to look at the parts, if it doesn't look too bad, I'm going to order some parts for it and we'll try and make the rebuild. So I loosened up all the bolts on the clamshell, I kind of went in a crisscross pattern as I loosened them to relieve some stress. All the bolts are same size around the perimeter and these two that are in the field in the middle are a little bit longer but they're both the same size. So all the bolts are removed. There's some little ear tabs kind of going around the transmission case. And what I'm going to try and do is pry up on these to loosen up the top cap. And it looks like they have uh, RTV sealant inside here. And that wasn't too bad. It seems to be lifting up. That actually the the entire transmission was actually fairly easy to remove from uh, the tractor. I was surprised. It only took me about uh, 25 minutes with uh, some power tools. So the crankcase comes right off just like that. So here's a close up look inside here. I don't know how well you can see it, but there is a lot of metal. This is a magnet back here. Those are all metal particles. And uh, there's a lot of metal on the bottom. And looking at this main gear, I can see there was a little bit of metal. You can kind of see a mark that was in the middle there. Um, it was probably like some aluminum though, because uh, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't break any teeth. So, anyhow. Um, I'm going to go through this thing a little bit and try and figure out what's going on. So after looking at this thing and doing a little research, this is the filter. 
this part will be replaced and you can see it has a little bit of uh, particles in there so I'm gonna buy a new filter to put in because they recommend replacing that all these gears look good so you know there might be a little slight damage if anything but they're fine um, I'm gonna I think take out what pulls out I noticed this middle gear here should pull right out and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out what needs to be pulled out and I'm gonna clean the whole inside of this thing I'm gonna like degrease it and get all these little metal particles out of here here's a magnet you can see it's just loaded with uh, ferrous particles um, from what I've read usually the the pumps and the motors which are these piston things that's what tend to go bad so I haven't removed this yet but um, I'm gonna get in there and remove it and we'll see how bad it is and hopefully uh, you know I do see some damage because then that'll give me hope that if I order the parts I'll be fixing something and not just wasting my time back here is the one of the magnets that's used to pick up particles and uh, this is definitely going to have to get pulled out and clean just to give you an idea of how I don't know if that's a lot of particles or not. It looks like a lot, but at least everything's small. So at this point, I've been looking around a little bit. I still haven't seen anything major, and I decided that I'm going to try and get into our pumps and our motors, and uh, I'm going to remove these bolts. They're uh, 14 millimeters and we're going to try and lift up these piston assemblies and like I said that's usually what causes damage now I did talk to someone at Tough Torque that's the company that makes this particular transmission or transaxle and they told me that John Deere fills these with 10W30 and they recommend 5W15 synthetic so uh, we're going to put in the synthetic when we seal this thing back up alright so those are loose we're gonna try and carefully lift that alright this is for reference only there's a round side washer then you have the main gear and on the other side that has the slot you have a washer the middle gear and then there's a ring on top of there that's just for reference so at this point I'm just trying to carefully lift this just using some screwdrivers I think this thing's spring-loaded so I'm just trying to take my time it looks like it's coming up this whole assembly's coming up Because I'm not quite sure how this thing's going to come out, I've just been kind of lightly wedging a screwdriver in here on different sides, and I think this entire unit is just going to lift out, but it has a whole lot of pieces with it, so I just want to be extra careful when I remove it. So, as you can see, this whole unit kind of pulls out just like that. So I'm going to actually inspect it and I'll let you know, I'll show you what I find. Alright, this is just for reference only. So you got a gear, big washer, there's a bearing, and you got this plate, and then all the pistons. So at this point I'm going to disassemble this. So there's like a spline with a gear, and you have, looks like this will slip right out, here we go, this pump is pretty much what needs to be replaced, I don't know if this is the pump or the motor, I guess this one's the pump. So, we'll take a look at these pistons and see how they, they look. And in here you have a race and a bearing, which look good. Although I do see a particle of metal 
right there on my glove I just pulled it off so as far as this piston goes everything looks good I'm not seeing any damage um, there's no real play in here supposedly the distance between the piston itself and this housing that these pistons are in it's only supposed to be about a thousandth of an inch I don't feel anything real loose or anything everything looks really good here and you gotta be careful this thing's spring loaded there's also a real fine washer on the bottom that you don't want to lose so this one looks good so on this part um, I just lost a little ball this is peg in here some sort of valve there's a, a little ball that goes in there first and then once the balls in there you have a spring that goes in here and then this goes in the hole these can pop out that's how I lost that one so that's how they go back and uh, there's also this little tiny bead thing looks like a tic tac I believe this goes in that hole right there but I'm not sure I'm gonna check the schematic so it's a good idea to print that out which I did um, before I took this thing apart this machine surface looks good I don't really see much as far as wear on it so that's good I guess alright now we're gonna move up to this piston assembly I'm gonna try not to drop these and we'll try and slide this guy out of here well, there's plenty of oil in there And you can see how these pistons go together. It's basically the spring and the piston itself. I don't know if there's another part in there. There might be something else along with that spring in there. So here's the piston. And I'm just checking it here just trying to wiggle these things around they seem pretty tight and they look nice and clean and shiny so don't really see any problem with them 